again, ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues. Here we are, another episode, and a really, really great pleasure today um, to introduce a young man, Edward Cousins. Morning. Morning, Ed. Morning, Ed. Lovely to see you. Now, Ed, um, Ed's the Director of Business Operations for a very, very innovative company called Hello Air Crew. Now, for those who've been listening, we've spent a lot of our series on the traditional um, airline business and especially cargo, and we're branching out now. So this is an area that we're looking into, and it's private jets. Very, yep. very glamorous, Ed. So, and, and I must say, you look the part. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> and you definitely sound the part. What a lovely <laughs> accent for for anybody listening out there. It's a, it's a very, very, very nice accent. I know some members of my family would love to listen to you. <laughs> now, Ed, um, one of the things that I just want to ask you before we start is, um, and, and that question will be about how glamorous it really is. Yeah. But firstly, why did you agree to come on the podcast? Exposure for the business. We are, in terms of the industry, relatively young. Yep. Um, but we are we are gathering pace, which is you know, our, the response to our our solution is brilliant. But yep. I, yeah, I'm I'm looking at pushing this further and harder, uh, and what better way to do it? Okay, very good, very good. Now, one thing that we will touch on, and ironically. You're associated with uh, with private jets, and uh, what I found out is that uh, accident prone. Anything that you're involved <laughs> in, or anything that happens, whether it be instrument, property, or yourself, yeah, something will break. Something will break. So a little bit of a little bit of a contrast yeah. and no. a <laughs> paradox there with what you're doing. Absolutely. So let's start. How did you get into this business? And explain a little bit more it's called hello air crew it is so uh i started off in the industry um initially doing brokerage then working for aircraft manager uh the two guys that own the business steve payne and kieran blay who well, who founded the business they also they, they'd worked within the crewing side of uh the industry yep uh between us there is decades worth of experience and one of the biggest headaches that we always faced while working for operators was the lack of crew and should somebody require a freelancer where do you go you know, you, you've got this little black book as an aircraft operator um but sometimes your little black book isn't always available so you start ringing around, you get numbers from you know, a mate of a mate who might still be raised on the aircraft, and it could take you days to find the solution to get an air- aircraft moved, which ultimately costs you an awful lot of time and money. Yep. So what better way to solve this issue than with a solution that's, that is in- innovative, tech-based, and you know, it's, it, it's a public little black book for everybody out there. Uh, listing as many crew members as we can get with their all their documentation, which is you know, a- approved uh, and released by them uh, on request. And it, it, it's a case of you log on, you find the crew member you're looking for on a certain aircraft type based by location. Yep. And you do your transaction you, and you've got them booked. Okay, so putting it in a, in a, in a very simple format, it's a little bit then, then like Airbnb. So absolutely, you've got an operator who's got an, who's got equipment, the aircraft. Yeah, and we all know how expensive that is if if they're not flying. Indeed. And then you've also got a requirement for crew, whether yep. it's to be up front or whether it's to do with the cabin crew. Absolutely. And what you do is you put the vehicle together. It's a platform that people that can log on, absolutely. and then it's an introduction, and then one deals with the other. Yep. But you're the catalyst for the relationship. Absolutely. Okay. Spot on. Right. So we got it nice and simple. Now something that that I'm always focused on and conscious of is people's understanding about safety and security. Yep. Okay, and especially in this world. Of course. The way, the way it's gone. So what I'd like to know now is, um, with that in mind, how do you actually ensure that who you're putting together is the right mix? And not just from the qualification and capability and also the, um, the authorities or the regulatory controls of the crews, going yep. to work somewhere else, but also of the operator to make sure that they've got everything in there because you've got to look after the welfare of the crews as well. So in terms of getting an operator to sign up to the, the platform, um, they, can, they can sign on to a website and, and apply for an account. Yep. That account is not activated until we actually look at who that operator is. And of course, we do get a lot of people, competitors as well, trying to yep. sign up to the platform 
whether it you know somebody in the middle of you know somewhere in in, in a country which may typically look at software try and copy it yep uh and, and we can blacklist them based on that or we'll look at an operator look at their track record yep uh see whether they are the right fit yep. for for us as a uh business and yep. do our little bit of vetting see what that you know see if we can find out any uh safety records anything like that because you know operators like to talk about their safety records yeah well they must do it's um, bread and butter of the business uh, of course so you know they're, they're typically very transparent on that sort of thing yeah. we're in that sort of position where we are happy to say no to a client because we, we want to make sure that we are running a, a safe business you know ultimately we are putting a freelancer into an aircraft which is flying yeah you know the last thing that you want to happen is that that aircraft has got a tainted safety record and something goes wrong exactly and there's been lots of examples that, that you know, absolutely in the media yeah so we spoke about you know god bless him the footballer just recently and yeah, coming indeed. to light you know with the messages that he sent yeah that he was frightened he was worried and now it yeah, looks like it looks like that he was he himself because of the the fumes and everything that that yeah. was one of the reasons why they both went down yeah and it's um any loss of life obviously is absolutely terrible um and you know it's it's something that everybody wants to avoid and that's one reason why we try and try and vet our operators and then also our crew members yeah you know we are looking at how we can have some sort of verification mark on the website uh that you know these crew ha have been vetted but we are keen and working with crew members to tell them that actually we want to see you reaching a minimum standard of training, not going above and well, yeah, we want them to go yes, above fit, and beyond fit, fit for purpose. the minimum requirements. Yeah. You know, we want to show operators you are investing in your career yep. by doing extra training that isn't necessarily necessary. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, it's 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 one of those industries, especially in, in private aviation where it's you can get away with not maintaining the same standard as, a, as a, an AOC chartered aircraft. Yeah, but obviously of because of the size and the fact that the flight crew are more responsible for, for basically everything on that, on that absolutely. Smaller, smaller aircraft. Yeah. But the thing that's that's so important to me, and we, we spoke about it, and I'm, and I'm pleased that you uh, you acknowledge that that's part and parcel of your your company's DNA, the the magic the magic formula of hello aircrew. Is the fact that you you do do independent verifications yourself, whether it's spot checking or whether it's through a series of trends or absolutely or, or just best. And we like to see we like to see that you know yeah, crew members upload their licenses, their passports, all this thing. But w one thing we really like to see is that they upload their training pack yep. from their simulator provider, because ultimately anybody can write that they've done a you know a license a renewal. Yep, uh, handwritten. But that training pack from that simulator provider is a much meatier document to try and forge. Uh, and the last, you know, and, and we before spoke about a recent incident of a, a crew member having forged his documents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know, yeah, okay, there, there were no incidents, but that doesn't make it right. And that's why that's why the verification, validation, cross-checks. Cross because it doesn't matter what... I mean, it, it, it's the world over. It doesn't yeah. matter what f what line of business you're in. There's always somebody that's going to do something fantastic, but there's always somebody who's going to do something. Oh, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and the reality is, is, is the quickest way to make money is illegally. Yeah. Um, oh, let's be careful yeah. there now. <laughs> we don't want people. We don't want people no. sitting there. We're trying to get youngsters into this business. No, of, of course. But you know, it's 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 a case of. You know, if someone can try and exploit the system, there will there will be somebody out there that will, and we you know, we are there to try and combat the same way you've got other associations like the Air Charter Association trying to combat dodgy charters. Uh, we're looking at how we can try and combat dodgy crews. Okay, so the most important the most important thing um, the most important thing is um, the fact that you are most definitely focused on that verification and validation so we want everybody to understand that you know if you're lucky enough to get involved in in a private private uh, aviation or a private jet etc that there's a huge amount of due diligence that goes on absolutely and ultimately it, it is a, up to the operator to 
look at documentation and make sure everything is in line with their requirements you know, and their operations manual because somebody might not hold a certificate that is required yeah. for them, but it doesn't affect you know another operator. So you, you, they, they do have to make sure that you know, if they might say, oh, look, we want to use you, but you need to go and do this, this course, which will take you an hour online. Yeah, right, yeah, okay, yeah, you know, okay, fine. Um, but you know, there has to, there is responsibility on the operators. Yep, well. and that's that's where you've found that nice niche of of just bringing two groups together, absolutely, and, and making sure that both of those groups are still responsible for their own for their own accountability yeah. to the ultimate service that's being provided, yeah. which is safe safe uh, flight. Well, that's it. And the great thing about the platform, the way we've built it, is the crew members have got an online repository for all of their documentation. And when a, an operator wants to book them, it's a simple case of they say, "Can I see your documents?" Yeah, yeah. And you know, and it's at that point the crew member says, "Yeah, you know, here, here's access to all my documentation." That's it. That's good. Um, rather than you running around for a few days going, "Oh no, wait, we need this document and we need this one." Yeah, you know, just get it all done in one go. Yeah, save right. save time. Okay, that's good. Now, how long has it been going? So the business started in uh, 2016. Yeah. Um, it had a few hiccups when it came to the tech development, uh, but version one launched um, in twenty, the sort of tail end of twenty sixteen to, to twenty seventeen, really. Yeah. Uh, version two is in development, and it's yeah. without giving anything away. It's a much slicker system. Um, it's all the feedback that we got from operators has been deployed for yeah. version two. Okay. Just to, just to, just you know, we built the system as we initially expected, but of course these things constantly require development. No, you don't know. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's, we it's can't. We, you know, we, we're not hoping to just sit there. Well, we'd love to sit on our hands and do nothing and and, and see placements come through, but uh, ultimately, operators do drive what it is they want out of the platform. Yeah, uh, and, and the business. You know, we've seen the business now develop from purely being freelance placements to now. You know, we are offering simulator training for crew. We are, you know, doing ground school courses for them, at, you know, through e-learning and also classroom based. And we're now getting operators because of the, you know, the ease of the platform. We're now yeah. getting operators requesting permanent placements. So, you know, we've we've gone from being, uh, you know, this tech platform, uh, yeah. which was new to the industry, to all of a sudden we are challenging the the, the long term bigger players of the industry. Yeah who have commanded uh, the marketplace for a good number of years uh, when it comes to recruitment especially. Um, and the reality is because of our solution, we're able to offer it at a much better rate. And, and you're also, you've got, you've got um, your, your 3,000 plus placements or, or that's, that's, crew. Your, that's your crew on the go there. And, um, and what you were saying there about, about filling in and filling the gap and everything, it seems strange that, there's, is there a pilot shortage? Is there not a pilot shortage? And if there is a pilot shortage, why isn't the planning better? And if there isn't one, then listen. I mean, pilot shortage. It it it, it is a thing, and I, I can tell you who it's affecting, and it's our side of the industry. Uh, you've got scheduled airlines looking for ex they want experienced crew, of course, yeah. and, and and where are they getting them from? That you know, I've seen countless friends leave their well-paid jobs to go and join the airlines, whether that going in and starting at somewhere like BA at the bottom, you know, but being offered a decent package, um, or going off to, to the likes of Ryanair, you know, a well-paid Gulfstream captain who some would say had a very envi enviable position, going off and becoming a captain for Ryanair, where others might say, well, why are you doing that? You, know, you had a great job going and travelling, seeing the world. Well, you know, you, you get that element of stability. Yeah, stability and... Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're seeing we're seeing a lot of guys moving across, but then likewise, our, our main office is based up at Oxford Airport, London Oxford Airport, I should say, um, where you've got CAE and a couple of other training schools. And I've met a number of students there who are self-funding and graduating, but not having a job. It's terrible. It's a lot of money. It was a hundred grand plus. Yeah, it, it's an awful lot of money. But of course, they're 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 they're, they're investing in their in their futures and yeah. being told there's a pilot shortage. But then, where do they go? And so of that three thousand plus numbers, yeah, the, the 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 percentage of like what what people would call cabin crew, 
Yeah. Okay, so stewards, stewardesses, etc. Yeah, 15, uh, twenty percent. Yeah, about 15, 20 percent. It's it's a, it's a lot lower than, than people than, would expect. Than, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely, because obviously these people typically, and it is, it is men and women. Um, these people typically, you know, they are not when it comes to being an air hostess, they, they don't have to face the same regulations of training requirements because they're sm- flying on much smaller aircraft. Yeah, they, they don't have. To, they're not following uh, the same training requirements. But, but we like we like to see them having done a silver service course and also having done a, you know a CRM course so they know how to you know, properly communicate with the crew up front. Yeah, um, and 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 th- these people, <coughs> excuse me, these people are. Very, you know, very well trained, highly skilled. It's not. It's not an easy job in a yeah, exactly. in a small business jet. Let alone a, whether it be on a scheduled airline where it's it's crazy. But in a small business jet where you have you know a relatively small galley, yeah, and you've got six seven passengers that are expecting a, a decent meal, yeah, it's a it's a hefty job to uh, to get that all org- organised. Yeah, no, no, no. It is. My mom, wife was a stewardess with British Airways for twenty plus years, and my yeah. and my daughter now is. Um, she just changed career, and she's a stewardess. Well, I mean, if she uh, is, who's she with? She's with British Airways. Right. Well, if she if she ever fancies getting to the world of business aviation, she she knows where to start with oh, our platform. I think yeah, <laughs> that's why I've been so focused on 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 safety and, and yeah, like no, that, of course, like SMS and human yeah. fatigue. Now, now, something I wanted to ask, which is a pretty sensitive, but again, it's happened now in in the wider industry, and it's happening everybody. Everybody's talking about it as if it's something that's just popped up. Mental health, yeah, and it, and, and pressures for people, you know, and what they do when they've got a problem. You know, how how do you how do you address issues of that nature? Being a crew member and being on an aircraft is is as, as glamorous as the wider world think it is whether that's scheduled or within yep. business aviation is a highly pressured environment you know you you are in control of a machine yes you've got things like autopilot but if something something goes wrong you need to know what to do and that is an immense amount of pressure on a yep. crew member uh and yeah it does t- it does take its toll on on, on certain people we uh, as a business are very keen to promote, to to promote uh, positive mental health we're looking at uh, working with with a certain number of companies to to, to offer courses um, as it is you know becoming a, an EASA regulation for yeah. for mental health for, for crew members uh, in light of recent incidents um, and w- we're keen to push that out and, and actually you know encourage people to to be open and honest uh, and to do these courses uh, and and provide a certificate to, to show that they are in a, in a, a, a stable position because. It doesn't take a lot to uh, cause a catastrophe. Oh, my God. Um, and, you know, uh, again, in line with all, you know, all the safety stuff we've been talking about, it's, it's something we're very keen to promote, that it's it's a necessity uh, to have a stable crew up front, you know, whether you are a passenger or the, the owner of the aircraft. Uh, the, the last thing you want is somebody who's having a bad day and gets tipped over the edge yeah exactly well, um, it, happens, yeah, it happens everywhere so you've got to be more uh, uh, more uh of course and you know we've we've all seen pe- people whether it be uh people with, with drinking issues uh you know alcoholism or drug abuse um and of course i, I know guys who have a zero zero tolerance attitude towards that sort of thing especially when it comes to flying but unfortunately there are people out there that ha- have, have these issues and will you know take an aircraft up under the influence or at least try to and um again you it, it comes under the same same banner that you know there's it's 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 a it's, it's a very it's a difficult topic to yeah. to discuss and I, and I think that's why it has been for so long ignored to a degree but but the last number of years expect well within aviation yes there was that there was a that serious incident uh Five, four or five years ago um, but the world is waking up to mental health on a, a much broader yeah both mental health and alcohol I yeah. mean some of the films that have been out recent times you know yeah. and um, you know you sort of you sort of think my god but he still did such a good job but it's yeah, not the I point know. he did such a good job but I know. he shouldn't have been in the situation no, I know. and I know people that have land, uh, have done multiple sectors and landed under the influence of alcohol and been caught 
It's like, well, you know, yeah, you're lucky that you're lucky that you got away with not causing an incident. But yeah, no, I think when it, when it the comes risk, that, yeah, the risk you're putting exactly. no. other people at, and that's yeah. what it is. It's, 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 zero it's not just yourself. No. It's not yourself. No, zero tolerance. And then again, just thinking of my wife, my daughter, both flying, and I'd be thinking, oh, for goodness. So oh, I, of course. I, if, yeah, I'd kill them. Yeah, no, and likewise. And, and, and the last thing, the last thing I, I, I would ever want to do is to put a, a family member you know, of mine in, in a position you know, and I, similar to you. You know, what response would you? Oh, the big, <laughs> it's just unfathomable. But the thing is, like when people, like we, we, I mentioned it as a as a likeness to Airbnb, mm-hmm. and there are other platforms that everybody knows, and they've all had certain problems with the credibility of the whether it be the the facility, the driver. Yep. Whatever. So yep. it's no different in, in, in what you're actually doing. Now, you said it's been three years. Yeah. Uh, have you floated? Is it IPO? Is it still no, pr- no, no, no. privately it's not. owned? We, we, uh, it, it, it's, it's privately owned. Uh, early this year, uh, a collaboration agreement was signed with Jet Aviation. Um, they obviously liked our products. They had, make, they had their jet professionals. It makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, they had their jet professional service, uh, which is now uh, Jet Aviation Staffing. Um, we have we, we generated a lot of e- uh, interest at eBase uh, in twenty. Let me get this right. Twenty seventeen, when yeah. we had a, a podium there, and um, yeah, we got a lot of interest from competitors uh, and clients. And I think that you know, at first it was a, you know new kid on the block. What is it that they can actually deliver? Yeah, and now people are seeing the results. You know, we've had <laughs> we've had times where we've had uh, an initial inquiry come through from a brand new operator, and from initial inquiry to having somebody signed off and booked to perform a flight has been fourteen minutes. My God, that's great, isn't it? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's it's a statistic that speaks for itself. You know, we've had times as well where. And all all of I've these all of these um, these these facts these figures and everything they're all on your website and uh, well the website's getting redone okay, uh, so at the minute uh, the sort of the homepage all this sort of information no it doesn't contain it but we are, but you'll be doing we are working yeah, on that sort live of live dashboarding and, absolutely and absolutely and yeah, when you log in you can see you have a you have a dashboard but so, you know, some of the stats are are just brilliant yeah and and, and I, I do like to shout about it when I'm talking to, ah, no, to, you to new people you you know, and even. Even we've had uh, people go sick last minute, and we've had again from inquiry to aircraft actually taking off in Oxford. And of course, it's all you know, re- relative to who can respond at the time. But for someone going sick to the aircraft taking off was an hour. Um, yeah, they happened to be a very local guy who was raised on the aircraft. Yeah, but that's, but that's, it, no, that's great. You know, when you think somebody who's already charted the aircraft, yeah. it's for a reason. And and it's and it's what's what's really nice is that it's not just the uk it's you know it's not yeah. our home turf we, yeah. we, we, this is a, now a, a, a a spreading global product which um you know crew members going sick in dubai position aircraft down to nigeria job done yeah. you know we've yeah. got the we've got the crew members you've got the transparency they might not always be local to where the aircraft is but you can find that person you can you can plan yeah yeah uh without having to stress and run around calling you know not hundreds but no, that's great. A decent great, number yeah. of people. Yeah, and uh, just just curiously there because I, I, I was doing something with with tracking shipments, right? With all the people that are there, do you have do, do you know where they are? So have you got have you got the artificial intelligence built in for the crew members? Or, or so, so well, so what we have is uh, if they allow when you when you, to know when you, you sign up, you, you choose your home base. Yeah, um, we would love. And we did want it for version one. I don't know how far the guys are getting with it for version two. Um, but something we are always talking about is live location for crew. So my home base is Oxford. Yep. But I'm currently in Dubai. Well, okay. You know, you can see that, that person might be more more useful when they're actually in Dubai for an aircraft that needs exactly. to get moved. Instead of coming um, all the way back. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and of course, you could have somebody that, one idea that we always said from day one that would be really cool would be if someone was to sign up as a crew member and to be able to do a world tour 
going from one aircraft to another with their with their location constantly changing. Yep. You know, I've left London, I'm now headed to yeah, yeah, to yeah, Paris, yeah. then on to, you know, going yeah. around the globe based on their live location. Yeah. And yeah, that is something we would love to do. But of course the thing is that means a platform is always going to be watching where where you, where you are. are. And then you which, got all your which some people might not like. Um, but they can do it for for periods of time when they want to be actively on duty. Yeah, of course. And and, 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 our, and our up. and our platform does have an active duty yeah. function. So you have a calendar used, you know, which automatically gets updated if you're booked onto a job. But it's it's also for you for if you've got other jobs booked elsewhere. You know, I, I appreciate that crew members won't only be booking trips through us. Yeah. Um, but they can say, yeah, we're unavailable. So yeah, yeah, it's not a bad idea that they say, all right, well, yeah, whilst I'm on duty. Yep. on your platform then we can align with where the nearest yeah. one is oh, yeah. thank you very much i'll pass that one on to uh i look i'll be looking for some share options yeah okay no, but seriously because uh, we're, like, we're doing this tracking and i thought to myself my god almighty you know because now you, you can do it with your phone whatever yeah, so you can course. link into a system and yeah. if you're doing it that that yeah, way yeah. then it makes sense to do it yeah well this is it obviously the, we, the platform um it's it's been designed in such a way that f- you know for an operator the reality is they're going to be on their on their desktops in the office looking yep. for crew yep. but but they can also they can use it on their phone or their tablet when they're at home yeah um, we've got the mobile app coming out for the crew members yep. which of course would feed in perfectly for the, for the for the geo tracking exactly. um, it's just you know we obviously there's terms and conditions which people just need to yeah, yeah, look yeah. at before there's there's a, I know there's a a lot of stuff on people's data being shared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, but it's how it's shared. And if people uh, know, course, if people know and agree, yeah, yeah, and that's it. Well. And we are very, we're very transparent with with both operators and crew as to how how their data is handled. Yeah, uh, and to the point, as I said, you know, the crew upload their data. Yeah, but we can't see their documents. An operator yeah. can't see their documents until it's approved yeah. because they are their it's their sensitive information. Um, but that's 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 a thing of the of, of the current time now. Yeah, of GDPR, course. cyber yeah. security. I mean, know, hacking and the platform. The platform will notify crew members when a document is due to expire. But that doesn't mean you know that's an awesome, that's an automatically generated yeah, thing. Yeah. That's not us no, no, snooping. No, 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 um, no. no we, we we are very transparent on on that. With oh, you have to be. Everybody. Now we're going to ask you something. Yeah. Now, obviously, with the with the nature of the business we've been talking about. Yeah. And the opening. And our chat before, you seem to be a man who, and I'm, I'm just looking at the cup, and I'm looking, <laughs> at, the, I'm looking at the mic, and I'm looking at the cameras. Um, you're accident prone. Yeah, very much so. If if it, it if it can break, I'll probably break it. And Whether that be a bone in myself, or it's not, it's not necessarily breaking it. You know, we 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 bought a house last year. We couldn't find what we liked, having sold ours six months prior. And so it was a case of my wife was six months pregnant. Okay, we've got to get a house. Um, so we bought this house that didn't need anything doing at face value. Had a survey, no, nothing needs doing. Okay, brilliant. And every single room. I'm, I'm currently, in my evenings, before my daughters go to bed, I'm spending an hour ripping out our and, and redoing our, our en suite because both the bathrooms in the house that are over the garage both leak into the garage. And it's just a real pain in the neck. But, you know, if I if I touch it, apart from business, of course, uh, you but, got, you know, in my, life, yeah. in my personal life, in my personal life, and you know, whether it be a car, you know, buying cars, I'm terrible at buying cars. Every car I've ever owned has just had one after the other major mechanical malfunction. So your wife's a very, she's very optimistic then, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> and, you, and you met at Loughborough? No, 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 no. We we before. actually we met Cheltenham. at school, yeah, in Cheltenham at Dean Close School, um, when we were sixteen. So it was uh, it was love at first sight, should we say? Yeah. Of course, at the time we never thought we were going to get married, but uh, here we are now, happy married, two kids. And how how long how long from sixteen to getting married? Uh, it was eight years. So you're a cautious man. Yeah, but at the same time we were still young. I wonder why we commit. <laughs> I wonder why we commit. Eh? <laughs> And also for you keeping your mental stability, yeah, a bit of a boxer. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's one of those it's one of those sports which is mentally and physically exhausting. Um, and it was after our first child was born, I I kind of got the whole dad bod thing, um, and I thought I need to do something. But I don't I don't particularly enjoy. But it's why I'm going to Loughborough. Yeah, I'm, I'm we not. Said that. <laughs> I'm not I'm not your typical sportsman but boxing 
transformed very quickly uh, the way that I was thinking. Again, you know, helping me sl- probably through exhaustion, but I was sleeping better. Uh, I was thinking clearer, um, and I lost a ton of weight, an absolute ton of weight. How much did you lose? Uh, so I, I'd gotten up to, I'm terrible with, I, I, and I love imperial measurements when it comes to distance, but I was 116 kilos, uh, and I dropped down to 92-ish. I've put a bit on now, but it's all, it's all muscle. It's all right. <laughs> so I, 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 can, I can see that. I can see that. Listen, did you did you ever watch the uh, Muhammad Ali? Have you ever watched that documentary that takes through his through his life? No, you know I haven't. No, you, I never have. I tell you, it's one of the. It covers everything. It's got it's got uh, Malcolm X, right? Martin Luther King, it's got yeah. the assassinations, John Kennedy. Uh, uh, okay, all about that time. But my God, he, what's it on? It, uh, I can't remember. I, wa- I watched it on on. I watched it on. Um, I can't remember. I watched it on catch up TV on. Okay. Last time I was back, but you, you, it's two episodes. Right. It is absolutely fantastic. Is it? It's have, so have entertaining. Look. look it up. He was such a class act. Fun, a bit of a pain in the butt as well. Yeah. Um, but it's got all his earlier fights. You know, it's incredible the way he he just goaded everybody into into just falling into his way. He was he was uh, a lyricist. Uh, a, a phenomenal sportsman. He, he was my my grandfather. I remember my grandfather always talked about Muhammad Ali being the well. Everybody says it the greatest, but by far. But you know, but my you know, my my it was my grandfather that introduced me to Muhammad Ali at, at such a young age, um, and, and you know, and it, my grandfather was obviously from a generation where people wouldn't necessarily engage with other ethnic backgrounds but he saw this man in Muhammad Ali and just you know, in, in, in completely oh, he's, he's a, there's no words to really describe nah. Ali no but, um, what, but when you watch this program right and you look at what happened to him psychologically um, with with religion yeah yeah, yeah. with politics yeah. with getting involved with government with all these things that went on and he still came back and he was three times world champion. Yeah. And the sad, sad, sad thing is, one of the things I, I watched and I just thought, why on earth did you do it? When he went with Holmes for the fourth, and Holmes was his sparring partner, mm. young, it was so, so destroying. And to see Holmes, Holmes crying himself. Yeah. Because he knew he destroyed the man that he always wanted to be. Yeah. And that was the end. It was... I know, but every dog has his day. It does, but, <laughs> but, but, but you, you... Do you know what I'm saying? It, it's something that I always, I always think. Why do, why do people, all of us do it? Why do we do that thing that we know we're probably not going to achieve? Well, push ourselves a little bit too far. Not, not pushing too far, but, but actually, something inside you almost knows that you're very, very not likely to, to actually do it, and we still do it. And it's not about pushing now, but you know, for, for that particular fight and that particular period, he didn't need to do it. And when you look at him in the first episode, and they've done it so cleverly, you see the speed, you see the yeah. you see the way he's able to hone his body, the way he's able to do things, what he's able to take. It was incredible. Then when you start watching the second one, you start seeing that slow in, the, the, mm-hmm. way, the way he was protecting himself and letting them tire themselves out. Well, that yeah. punishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it was well, incredible. Yeah, and, 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 and I've... I've, I've gone up against a guy who was about a foot and a half I mean I'm six foot four and he was about a foot and a half shorter than I was or at least it appeared to be but he was about a foot and a half wider yeah and I mean he was able to come in I, I thought I've got this you know I've got the reach I can keep him at bay but no as soon as he got past my arms my lanky arms he came in close and there's nothing I could do absolutely nothing I could do and I just had to as you just said take that punishment and taking the punishment is Exhausting, yeah. absolutely exhausting. Um, you just got to roll with the punches, I guess. But, but don't, you think, <laughs> don't you think that's what happened with Joshua as well? Because he was yeah. leaning oh, down and in, do and he what? underestimated. That was a similar way to obviously seeing someone like Ali lose. What a Se- shame! Seeing though. Joshua, I was absolutely gutted. I think, well, I think the whole nation was. Yeah, everybody, everybody. It, it uh, stopped all the after parties well, and everything. Well, it was well, awful. One of the biggest sporting upsets, yeah. apart from the recent well, it was cr- like, it was like, cricket it, World it, Cup. It but was <laughs> like, um, yeah, but it, it, it was like, um, it was like uh, Ali and Spinks. Yeah, 
And now, what, so what do you think is going to happen now in the in the return fight? <sighs> well, it might be like Rocky too. <laughs> no, but seriously, do you think do you think it's a, he's going to get it back? I'd like to see him get it back. You think he's got the hunger? I I would definitely think he's got the hunger. Yeah, and he's taken literally taken a knock to the chin, and I I really hope he gets it back. But it's an awful thing. That's an unnecessary blemish on his career. Yeah, it is, but. At the same time, it, this could define him. Yeah, okay. Moving forward, yeah. And what do you think of the, of, of the venue? <sighs> that's where I that's where I live at the moment. Is it Riyadh? Yeah. Well, it's going to be Riyadh on Saturday, the sixth of I just, December, I think it is. <laughs> Boxing matches are one of those things which, no matter where they are in the world, you're gonna you're gonna get an audience. Um, I remember when I started watching boxing at university and we stayed up all night and I think it was a Ricky Hatton Mayweather fight yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah and we so. waited for hours for this thing to start and then it was over yeah. like that yeah. because of a, tr- a couple of trips <coughs> uh, you know people are happy to stay up late at night or watch it earlier in the morning yeah so, so the location the venue isn't yeah, not such a big, not thing. such a biggie. Uh, the, the world's connected, and that's what you know. That's what our business is. You know, we we we're connecting the world, whether it be like, like you know the likes of Facebook. Every everything is connected these. Days. It is. It is. It's a and and with with people able to stream stuff over satellite, yeah. You know, and, and pay for it on a match by match basis, or whether they pay for a subscription. You know, you, it, it doesn't matter. Even if you decide to record it and watch it the next day, yeah, you're going to see the newspapers. Yeah, no, it's incredible. But, like, living in Saudi and seeing the changes that have gone over there in the last five, six years, it's incredible. And now they're putting on, you know, from golf to to cage fighting to the the most expensive um, horse race in the world is going to be there as well. I mean, they're doing incredible things to open up the country. And it's one of the few countries now that everybody's interested in because the way the economy's going. So now your industry... And your product, do you see when the economy starts to, to to slip a little bit? Which, in my opinion, it's it's slipping more than just a little bit. Right. How does that affect the private jet side of things? Because I know when people have got a bit of money, they don't want to queue up. They don't want to go through certain security issues, and and sometimes the 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 private jets aren't that much more expensive than you know than business class or first class or some of the other carriers. Sure. So what's your expectation now for the next year or so? Well, do you know what? Sa- Saudi's quite an interesting one because um, obviously it's got its own aircraft register. Yep. Um, and they are very stringent going through their uh, validation process for crew. Yep. So I think, you know, for, for us it's only going to be a good thing. And in fact, you know, it's... Every time somebody flies on a different aircraft register and needs an aircraft validation, we have to go to the authorities and get that for them. You know, that's a yet another vetting step. Yep. That an actual government organisation is looking at these person's documentations and yep. going, yeah, yeah, actually, do you know what? They're good enough to fly. Here is their validation. Um, and I think with with the likes of, um, you know, you said, well, more and more countries who get interested in business aircraft. Uh, it's only it's only a good thing for us. Yeah. Um. He is. The reality is the guys in our side of the industry and within business aviation. They're they're in our side of the industry because they like to see the world a different place every single time. It's not always the same scheduled route. Yeah. They're getting to see places where a lot of people dream of going. Um. And they're going. And they're getting paid to go there. Yeah. Whether that be going to the Maldives and sitting there for a week, uh, you know, w- w- with an owner, um, or, or just n- nipping down to Nice for the weekend, you know, the, the more and more people get to see uh, a far more interesting side of the world from our you know, with our side of the industry and and w- with the likes of uh, Saudi, um, and I'm interested to see what's going to happen with North Korea as well. Um, you know that you're going to see more crew traveling on aircraft uh, to different locations because people, you know, pe- politically you know, and geographically, people have got different interests as to what we've got. If it's not necessarily business, if it's travel and leisure, then you know they're, they're going to be wanting to fly potentially to different places in the world that 
a European client might not be getting. Yeah. So who, who knows? But you don't see uh, so so you know do you, do you do you see the economic situation now the way things are going? You've only got to look at the news every single day and whether it's China and and Trump and he's tweeting yeah. or whether it's Brexit or whether it's problems in Italy or Greece or yeah. you know South America whatever. It's that that, that ev- everything seems to be bad news at the moment. It does, but um, I think the reality is is aircraft will always have to move. It's 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 one of those necessities. Um, yes, charter might slow down, but those who have the aircraft still need to do their business. Yeah. And you know, the majority of the majority of aircraft owners are in positions where they, they've they've earned their money over the years. Yeah, yeah so it's pretty uh, stable. Uh, it's pretty stable. But also the model that you've got when things are going a little bit bad, it helps it helps the 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 operator with the staff, and it also helps the staff Absol- not have to be released by the operator because now they absolutely can be and you know and we've so. seen we've seen operators uh, you know an aircraft's been sold by an owner yep. for for whatever reason that may be, but the crew are employed by the aircraft operator, um, and that they don't. You know, they don't want to be making these redundancies. Or if an aircraft goes into maintenance for a long period of time, they don't want to be sort of saying, all right, cool, we're just going to terminate yeah. your contract for a few months and we'll see you when the aircraft's back. Yeah, you exactly. know, At the end of the day, th- these employers have responsibility for, for their employees. And so we, we are seeing uh, aircraft operators saying, look, you know, we've got guys sitting around doing absolutely nothing. Yeah. Can, can we get them moving as well? Exactly. Now... In your role, director of business opportunities, where do you see things in the next three to five years? Uh, <laughs> that's very interesting. Um, again, tying in with the whole pilot shortage uh, and you know, the, the, the most expensive thing within ev- well, for any part of aviation is when an, an aircraft doesn't fly. Yep. Um, what I'm, I'm working on uh, with, a, with a number of operators at the minute, and I am sort of keeping it within... Um, sort of the confines of, well, I don't know how much longer we'll be part of EASA land, but, um, you know, w- what I'm looking at is, if you look at the, the start of a new aircraft production, that aircraft gets built, it gets signed off by an authority. They are writing these manuals for how to use this aircraft, how to fly this aircraft, yep, how to yep. maintain this aircraft. Yep. That gets signed off by somebody. Yep. Somebody buys that aircraft and gives it to somebody within the UK. Yep. That operator within the UK will interpret those manuals and <laughs> they'll interpret in one way differently to the guy who's in the office next door. Yep. And people will start having different, you know, SOPs and yeah, the it's complexity is just, what you're saying should be a little bit more standard, a little bit more simple. Absolutely. How how and can we how can we look at, at standardising yeah, yeah. the industry? Now that's a cro- I mean, and, then, a, and how do we then, or where do we go from there? Is it the case of we have two two operators, both with the same aircraft types? They are standard in the way that they're they're operating and flying these aircraft, obviously in a safe safe manner. Yeah. When are we going to start looking at crew sharing? In, in a sense of, well, you know, we've got sickness, but we need a com- we, we need to full a commercial flight. It's not necessarily a private flight, which you know. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. So having a contingency, a contingency group, a reservoir of people that are flexible. Absolutely. Across it, and, and it's essentially it's essentially you know sort of training agreements amongst people. They have standardised yeah, yeah. their training. Yep. And yes, there are little things you need to get around like. Making sure they're flying with a line trainer, you know, to make sure that they are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Check out and everything. Exactly, yeah. but yeah. but um, it's it's one of those things which is a case of let's let's not say we can't do this because of whatever. Let's just start, let's look at, let's look at this this whole scenario and say yeah, but we can do it if maybe we as do we this. maybe as we do maybe as we do sink into more more challenging times, it will make people start to think. You well, know, how, how do you sort of collaborate how do you sort of communicate and that's what it and that's absolutely what it is and, I, and, I, and as a driver as i just said you know i'm, I'm very much one of those people that's uh we ca- you know with a can if attitude rather than well you have to be don't you if you break everything that comes in contact <laughs> with you <laughs> you've got no choice 
Yeah, no, that's very true. But you know, it's it's this this sort of uh, and as a business, that's very much where we're at. You know, we yeah. can we we can do this if we if we're able to get this, this and that in, you know, place, yeah, in yeah. place, rather than you know, I, I know a number of operators that will go, oh, do you know what? We can't do that because of this yeah. regulation. It's like, yeah. hey, that's a great that's a great regulation, but how can you work with that regulation? Yeah, and, and to achieve what it is you're trying to achieve. No, that's right. That's right. Now, I'm going to ask you something else. Yeah, because we're nearly at we're nearly at closure. As a dad. Yep. All right. So if I was uh, if I was to ask your wife now, what's the song that whenever it comes on, that's the one for you. That's the one that gets you up dancing with that big hulking six foot four inch frame that Jason <laughs> Statham look alike. What would much. you do? Uh, <laughs> what, what would it okay, be? What would it be? There's there's a you know what? There's a there's a lot. There's a lot of songs to do that, but uh, sure, it depends who's with me. If it's my if it's my eldest daughter, it's uh, Thunderstruck by ACDC. That's her favourite song. Jesus, she absolutely. How did she get into that? That's my influence. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Definitely not my wife's. Um, so she got into that song from a very young, sort of when she was almost one. Yeah, she yeah. started. You could see the head going in the car. Yeah, okay. and then and then she started the whole na 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 na. It's like now it's just boom. That's her song. Right. Um, but for me, it's probably a couple of Queen songs. So, Fat Bottom Girls. Fat Bottom. <laughs> That'll get me going. Yeah, yeah, right. That'll get me going. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or I don't know. Do you know what? This morning it was uh, a bit of Madonna. Yeah, yeah, like Which a prayer. One? Oh my goodness, mate! Yeah, I just started singing it in the shower for no reason. Uh, yeah, a big the, difference from Fat Bottom Girls and, and Thunderstruck. I, my 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 musical taste is is really. But that's varied. the one that you would get up and dance to. Fat Bottom Girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fair dues. Books. What do you write? What do you like to read? What do I like to read? I have. Uh, it's not really. It's not a fascination. But I have a big interest in. Sort of World War Two literature. Yeah, um, I read a great book uh, called uh, Hans and Rudolf, which was about well, a, a German Jew and, uh, and a top-ranking German uh, official, yeah. um, and about you know, the, the hunting him down. Um, true story, and great to read. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I like. I prefer fact over fiction. Yeah, okay, well, that's, um, that makes sense. But one of the things that we do on these is we try and pick out a title of a book yeah. for people before the end of the interview. So you just said something, I've got yours now. And if I was also to meet with your wife and we had dinner yeah. and you stepped out of the room right. and, I, and I said to her, what would you like to change in him? What would it be? The beard. Seriously? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she, 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 likes, she likes stubble. But she's not a beard fan. Yeah. But this is just low maintenance. And I say it's low maintenance. I have to trim my head every week. So So you trim your head more than you trim your beard. I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but not I mean, what about working hours? What's your what's your average daily daily uh Do you know what I, I am one of those guys and as a team we are incredibly flexible. We'll get the job done. Um if I wake up in the morning and there's something to be getting on with, I'll I'll start off at home. But I'm, I make sure I like to make sure that I'm home for the girls before they go to bed. Try and you know be with them for their dinner time. Yeah, get them into bed, and if I have to think how on after that, I will. Of course, there's the odd occasion where that does get interrupted, and I have to yeah. step aside. But that's life. Yeah, but no. no like, but I, I, in terms of my actual working hours, they're they're pretty good. She wouldn't change that. I don't think. Yeah, I don't no, think. In the consistency of the guys that we've had on the show, obviously they're a lot older. Um, but the majority of them said that their wives would say, you know, that they should have cut back. They shouldn't have spent so much time working. But because they're so committed, yeah, I see. I when I was working for actual aircraft operators, that that would definitely would have been. Yeah, uh, and it's before we had kids. And I think it's because the girls are so young. I don't. I, well, I was working for an operator when our f- our first daughter was born, and I missed out on her first year. Yeah, like yeah. no end. Um, and so I've corrected that for this one. Um. And it's not it's not the operator's fault. It was, it was it was my choice to be on the phone to owners at two in the morning. Yeah. And yeah. still in the office till, you know, sometimes till three or whatever it would be, or go back to the office at eleven at night and you know, keep on working just to get get things done. But 
it was the nature of the beast. And, um, you know, I, I look now, I look at the two of them now, and I think, well, I only get this chance once with you. Nah, that's great. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, and I think I don't know. It's 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 something that no matter what you do, whoever you are, no matter how good you are, whatever, there's yeah. always something that you think you should have done. Oh, of better. course, but of it's course, about, it's about the quality of the time yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. She she'd probably change my uh, my commitment to DIY projects. If yeah, you asked I think. <laughs> <laughs> like I, said, I'm, I, I think I think we're coming to a close now, and I'm I'm, I'm happy that nothing's broke, and and I think Salem. Yeah, don't worry, been, I've kept my hands yeah, clear been, of everything. Yeah, apart we've from been watching that. that. Salem's yeah. he's getting ready there just in case something falls or whatever. But we've we're yep we're at the end of it now. So what I'd like to say is thanks very much. It's a part of the industry that a lot of people wouldn't have realised, wouldn't have known about, yeah. and I think you've opened that up for us. So that's great. It's something that I think if uh, if it keeps going, it's going to be it's going to be very popular because for whatever reasons, if people are growing, if they're getting bigger, you've got the same problems as if you're having to shrink. Yeah, it's of course. just it's just one as a smile and one as yeah. a frown. Yeah, of course. So I wish you great luck. Thank you very much. And your book. Yeah. Okay. Go the title it. that will be on it is "If It Breaks, I'm Your Man." Fat bottom girls. <laughs> so I think that would if I seen a title of a book like that, I'd want to have a read of it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, I might start writing it. Yeah, if it breaks, <laughs> I'm your man, fat bottom girls. Yeah. Good luck with the boxing. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll and, keep my and I'll also have a chat with my son Joe because the pair of you were at Loughborough exactly the same yeah, time. Yeah, so. it's crazy. Well, it's a small world, especially yeah. a small country. But, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. That's amazing, yeah. yeah. Ed, good luck, my friend. Oh, thank you very All much. Right, thank you so much for coming on. No, thank you. Appreciate it. Cheers. Thank you.